Welcome back to Zohpli. Second podcast today was uh, another Giro Italia mountain stage finishing on Protitivo. This time Pogacar and UE Emirates just did the most easiest pace possible just to win the stage. And today we will discuss the watts per kilo, what happened on this climb. And yeah, Naichka, which riders went to the breakaway? Yeah, there was like kind of long, longer fight for the breakaway, like like the last few days basically, because you didn't want to let like bigger groups go, and there was a lot of attacking. But then on the first category climb, the first Forca Capistrello category two, a decent breakaway formed. Geshke, Alaphilippe, Pelai Sanchez, Stora, Stora, who was up in the GC, um, the German. Has the Steinhauser and Party over around six minutes yeah. back in the breakaway? Those three, those were the only GC threats, and then also the ones that I already mentioned: Valentin Parapenter, Sheffield, and Narvaez from Ineos, Vera, who was already great in the TT climb yesterday, the Marquis, Mel- Mulebran, Nairo Quintana, Marci Luzzi. That was the breakaway. So a kind of strong breakaway, but they weren't really cooperating well, and there were already attacks early, and like at some point there was a four-man group ahead of them, and yeah, they they weren't working working well at all. Even though Ineos and Movistar had kind of two riders there, but Movistar didn't really pull at all, and yeah, they just never really got away. And then I think UAE just decided to go for the stage win. Bogacha said in an interview that his teammates told him to go for the stage. They want they were fresh and they wanted to. Right for another win. Yeah, of so course. That's like, like why not? It, yeah, it's so easy. Yeah, the breakaway only had thirty-five second lead before the Partitivo, so it was easily catchable on the climb. Yeah, I mean, we, we obviously also controlled before, but as I said, like the breakaway wasn't controlling or like working well at all. Like Movistar, and I think two riders they just refused to pull at all. Stora wasn't pulling at all. Like. It just didn't work. So, yeah, it was a GC day once again. And, yeah, the expected thing happened. Pogaccio won. <laughs> this yeah, time not like... with an attack, only with a sprint, but still, easy victory. Yeah, UE set an easy, like, let's say not an easy tempo, but, yeah, as hard tempo as possible with Mike, Groschartner, and Novak on the final climb. Yeah, they weren't close to the Pogacar, so, no, it's Alexei Lutsenko's yeah, climbing record on Protect Dio. I mean, it wasn't, that far. It, upper, wasn't so. that far. it it's wasn't like that far. It was like 18 seconds. Yeah, it's 20 seconds. seconds. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like yeah. for, for Giro Italia with Pogacar, it's still a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's like so shit performance. But yeah, they didn't care. They just yeah. want to win, win the stage with a lot less possible and energy possible like, yeah yeah i mean that's been kind of the theme the last few days also on the gravel stage Pogacar didn't attack at all so oh, i yeah. think he's just trying to conserve now obviously in the tt he went all out and dominated the stage yesterday but like i think we'll see this more and more often now that Pogacar will just either not go for the stage and let it go for a breakaway or just win in a sprint i don't think he'll do like the big attacks this race doesn't seem necessary his back is uh, gap is big enough. He he still has the second TT, where he can maybe win the stage, maybe not, but still get at least some GC time. So he should be safe in that regard. Yeah. Also, all the climbs are kind of easy for Giro Italy. But okay, I don't care about that. Tell 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 me about the watts per kilo. What Pogacar did on the climb today? Yeah, it was the six point one seven watts per kilogram for Tadej Pogacar and Martinez and O'Connor, who were in the same group basically at the finish. For 36 minutes, 20 seconds, it's it's a decent level, but if you consider it, it was like evenly paced, it was the perfect climb for what's per kilogram, like it wasn't anything crazy, like that's also, you can see by the group being kind of big, like it was around 10, 14. 10, 15, yeah, yeah 14, 14 riders. And then there were a few riders who were just just behind or something, yeah, yeah okay, 14 riders within the 21 seconds, okay, yeah. After that, there was a big gap, but yeah, 14 riders pretty close together, so nothing much changed in the GC either. The only thing is that Lutsenko and Plop like dropped dropped down a lot. Lutsenko lost two minutes, and I think Plop lost like crazy time. He dropped right to the bottom of the 20 minutes. 20 minutes. He finished yeah, 84th. Yeah. 
Yeah, he he's out of the GC, that's for sure. And he also lost the white jersey, which he was wearing uh, today after he took it yesterday on the TT from Uteburg. So he's now back in the lead ahead of Tiberi by 21 seconds in that classification. And Ahrensmann and Bodin also still up there in that classification. Yeah, it's weird that Lotsenko dropped so easily because, yeah, he won on Porti Tivo stage on Giro de Abruzzo. But maybe he isn't a Grand Tour rider. Yeah, he has finished in top 10 in Grand Tours in uh, Tour de France, 8 and but 7 that's... in 21 and 22. But those are the yeah. easy ones. Yeah, yeah, like 2021, and... that was the weakest, like one of the weakest yeah. Tour de France top 10s I've ever seen, to be honest. Because yeah. a lot of people crashed and not a lot of like a lot of people rode the Giro or something that year. I remember like it was not a great top ten. And twenty twenty two, I think he snuck back into the top ten with breakaways. With the breakaway, or, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he isn't a grand tour rider. Maybe uh, that's the reason why he didn't uh, perform so well today. Yeah, uh, like and he's also just very inconsistent. Yeah. Like yeah. Lutsenko, some days can climb like crazy good, and then on other days he will just completely blow up. Like I, I, I never understand how, like I can never predict how well he will climb. It's I think it's impossible. Yeah, he also is like kind of short, but uh, with a lot of muscles. Yeah, on PCS he is yeah. one hundred seventy four centimeters and seventy four kilograms, which might be true because he looks like a SpongeBob. Well, like I think, yeah, I think. I yeah. think 74 might be a bit high, but like, he's, yeah, maybe I would, it's I would guess him around know. 770 or 72 in the Grand Tour shape. Yeah, but again, like, when I look at Lance Armstrong, like, a few days ago, <laughs> he published his topless video of, uh, sponsoring a beer. And like, he was still like, let's say his body, pers body fat percentage was like 6%, maybe, but he still looked like, like, super heavy because of all the muscle, like, <laughs> that, that is like, like the same as he was riding the Tour de France. Like he was lean as fuck, but he was still like, you know, like heavy as fuck because of his muscles. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, uh, it's crazy. That he was just fucking like seventy five kilogram or something. Or yeah, a bit no, less, even maybe. like seventy five. Yeah, and yeah, he was seventy five. He was really struggling to get to seventy four. Like I was reading even his uh -huh. like uh, lab tests and everything and. Yeah, he had like 177 centimeters, I think, so 78. Yeah. Also, it's funny. Yeah, in that video, like his tits were like jumping, like, like there are like like a lot of muscles in his tits, even like I don't know in his chest. Like, uh, like yeah. he's so it's, fast. Yeah, it's so crazy what kind of physiques the GC riders had in the last like 20 years ago. Fucking in Miguel the Rhine, finger in the Rhine, <laughs> winning the tour at like 78 kilograms and like 190 centimeters or something. Then. Yeah. Fucking Bjorn Reese, who was a bodybuilder or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Then next year, yeah. Pantani, 56 kilogram, and then back to back to Lance. And then now, Jorn Singard, yeah. Yeah, okay, he was like alien. Alien, no, no muscle, no nothing, no weight. Yeah, also, the Wingard is, he has the lowest uh, body mass index from the all of the Tour de France winners of all time. Even yeah, uh, probably l less than Chris Froome. Like they were really how, close. How, how is yeah. the BMI? Is it like weight? Yeah, by... weight and the height. Height yeah, it's oh, divided okay, okay. somehow. Yeah, like okay. there's a formula. Uh, okay. But but yeah, like usually Tour de France riders will like I don't know, like Eddie Merckx like really packed. Like yeah, yeah Miguel Indra and Lance Armstrong and actually the climbing guys which we would expect to win like only now like. Performs like Contador, uh, Vingegaard, like even Pogacar is, is, is like, he, if you look at the history, is, is kind of like a climbing guy for, for Tour de France. Yeah, like the, yeah. the like the really low weight riders only started winning the tour in the last like 15 years or 10 years, like, or yeah. yeah, 15 years, something like Sastre. Okay, Pantani was an exception back in the days, but Sastre, uh, Contador. Even Froome is not like, yeah, not like that big compared to the GC winners of the past. You know, even wasn't like Le Mans also like sixty eight kilogram or something, and he was a pure climber. Yeah, um, he was more like a classics guy, but there were like some yeah. Ex yeah. exceptions also in the old days, like Charlie Gall. He was like I seeing like sixty four kilograms. Ah, uh, yeah, Bahamontes. But he was a he was like a pure climber. Yeah, Ocaña, yeah. Bahamontes. But but they were like exceptions. Yeah. You usually like these like Ino and uh, 
other guys I, I don't remember like Mercs uh, uh, yeah. Deal, yeah Mercs yeah. like they were like fucking huge but okay. yeah probably like it's like 70 kilogram is like the average weight from Tour de France winners over the years like yeah, from but... all of history maybe even more I don't know yeah because in the in the like uh, 120 years ago they were maybe like 90 kilograms because they were riding 500 kilometers per day <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like riding yeah, a, you... a, 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 around the France like, like literally yeah. around the France but okay yeah it is like because... the picture which is just it's basically just on the border they're riding yeah. like around the old border okay like okay, who cares about that uh Pogacar, yeah. yeah last 20 seconds to Alexei Lutsenko's pretty video record but Lutsenko yeah lost himself <laughs> two minutes and 20 seconds a day yeah uh, although yeah. like the, you might think that the uh, stage in the Abruzzo was like much easier but it wasn't if you look at the kill hill today was a bit harder but overall like the difference isn't big so yeah it's just it's just the difference I think between the Grand Tour and the uh, one week one week stage yeah. race because also like it's it's only stage eight but like they've ridden like the last few days very hard the tt yesterday the gravel stage was hard so i think that's where the difference comes from yeah exactly and, because and also stage like the, was yeah it was stage yeah. three also and there were like easier yeah. stages before that and it was paced perfectly also from start to finish it was like super hard pace from uae which helped obviously with the pace for today's such a performance wouldn't even be possible Unless yeah, maybe Pogacar, Pogacar, yeah. Pogacar maybe could have done it, but no, like no, no riders like Lutsenko or Diego Lisi. <laughs> yeah, like did they yeah, take uh, uh, Diego Lisi? Yeah, <laughs> to, to Giro <laughs> for some yeah, reason. I think I think he was second yesterday in the Tour of Hungary mountain top finish. Yes, I think he lost to Nice, but we book yeah, yeah, nice, yeah, second today eight yeah. on the punch punchy stage. Yeah. But so yeah, he probably has to farm UCI points, so can't be here. <laughs> uh, also, Pogacar in the, the 2021 Party Tivo stage on Tirano Adriatico, where he like attacked early, did uh, 6.41 watts per kilo. Uh, so he could have, I think, if if he went full gas, he could he could have reached like 36 minutes for like 6.5 watts per kilo, I guess. Something like yeah, that. it's possible. It's possible. How I think that's like similar to what he did on, um, uh, yeah, Breda Dom. Breda yeah, Dom. It was just a, it was a bit shorter, but also six point five watts per kilogram, and it was like a negative split because like he did the yeah. last fifteen minutes or at seven or something. But yeah, yeah because, uh, didn't have to go all out today, and he didn't. Well, yeah, because the Breda Dom, like the last five kilometers are like I don't know, like twelve percent, and before that it's yeah, like seven yeah, exactly. percent. So yeah, exactly. no, but Partivo is like super regular climb, like one of the most regular climbs I have seen in World Tour, like seven percent all the way, practically. And, like, and that's also probably one of the reasons why we usually see good watts there. Like even today, like it yeah. was kind of good watts. For like Aina Rubio, it might be one of his better performances in his career. Jan Hurt, it would be probably one of his better performances. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, that's because Tiberi. of the... Yeah, Antonio yeah Tiberi, Tiberi as well. Yeah. He even attacked Tiberi, but yeah, to no effect basically, because the pacing wasn't hard enough um, to really... And he probably also wasn't strong enough to to drop these guys. Or well, at least not drop Pogacar and Uitebrook, who uh, followed the attack uh, as the first rider. Yeah. Also, I was okay. I wasn't surprised. I was. I'm. Sur I'm surprised by overall performance this season by Alex Boden. He finished tenth on yeah. Divo, tenth in Basque Country, eighth in Volta Andalusia time cross, seventh in Besage, second in Marseillaise. Like, like he's so consistent yeah. and strong this year after his Trumbull case. Yeah. And yeah, that was the right contract. Got... Yeah, that was the right yeah. who tested positive for Trumbull at some point. But yeah, he he's performing well. Um, yeah, he's been great all year, especially on the climbs. So, like he's probably a strong rider. That if he's out of contract, like he's yeah. probably a rider worth to sign. Yeah, because probably his market he... value will also be low after the suspension or like positive test. Yeah, he tested positive for Tramadol last year during the Giro Italia. So ah, uh, okay. So yeah, so I see. he's performing I see. right now way better because. He finished seventy third there. Like his highest finish was uh, from breakaway in the tenth place, in which like Nico Denz won against uh, in the sprint against Tom Skunch and Sebastian Berwick. So yeah, ah yeah, that's nice. Yeah, 
oh, he actually lost to Mi Michael uh, Hessman in that stage, who finished ninth <laughs> in the sprint. So the, uh, the, uh, the, yeah. So positive Hesman, testers. Hessman still has a contract with with uh, with Melissa bike, yeah, because yeah, he's only suspended, and there's like some legal, like there's it striking on the legal battle, and like they're trying yeah. to prove if he actually doped or actually actually took something. What yeah, was he? Because, the, uh, theoretics, I think. It yeah, was yeah, what he he positive positive for, yeah. for theoretics. Like it's like let's say itself, it's not a doping, but it's a sign that he might have yeah, did it to flush out like out yeah, of his yeah. body something like faster and blah blah. blah. I'm not an expert, but it's it's sus. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. basically to mask the doping products, or yeah. like you can mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's a ma ma masking agent. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's making you piss more, way, way more. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, yeah, exactly. You're pissing all day, all night, probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But yeah, let's talk about Joe Italia. Like, uh, yeah, uh, before this podcast, uh, I, I saw the stages and like it's like the easiest Joe Italia ever. Like, I knew it's easy, but it's it's so fucking easy. Like, there are no steep finishes, like nothing, like no hard yeah. stages. It's honestly crazy. Like this today was probably one of the harder. Like it was. Maybe the hardest finishing climb. You can maybe say make an argument for stage ten, which is eighteen point one kilometers, five point six percent. But the last it is like irregular climb, and the last like six point five kilometers are at nearly eight percent or something. Like yeah. that may might that might be one of the harder finishing climbs. But again, but it's like, only one hundred forty-two kilometers the stage overall. Yeah, and so before it's... there's like no big difficulties. Okay, there's one category climb, but like the stages, this is not a Giro d'Italia, like classic Giro d'Italia route. And maybe they did it so Pogaccio, like you know, they convinced Pogaccio to come with this that he doesn't have to expend that much energy before the tour. You never know, but yeah. like it's it's one of the easiest. Sure, the Italian routes I've ever seen. Maybe the Queen stage is stage 15 to Lavinio, but also there the finishing climb is not hard. 14.6 kilometers, 6.3%, and a short downhill, and then 4.6 kilometers uphill again. Like, it's everything is like easy gradients. Then we have the Stelvio stage, which also like the Stelvio is probably getting taken canceled. out. And there's like yeah. cancelled, and there's no climb, like no real climb there at the start. And then the finishing climb on that stage is fucking crazy. Like it's 24 kilometers, 4.8 percent, and downhill, and six kilometers, six percent again. Like it's so easy. I don't even know if there's gonna be any gaps possible. If there will be gaps, then it's probably on stage 10, which I mentioned the irregular final climb. Stage 17, which is actually kind of a hard stage with on Paso, which finishes on Paso Borocon. Uh or stage 20, I think, which is Monte Grappa, two times Monte yeah. Grappa and then the descent. Like the gaps, I think the get the fight for the podium will be really close because <laughs> yeah, this stage are just not, not hard enough to make serious gaps. So yeah, might be an advantage for the TT riders. Yeah, like this Giro is made for Pogacar. Like, like the first stages were like hilly, perfect for punctures. Even in the first week, there were lost. Like even the second stage one was finished on Europa on a climb, which is unusual. Then stage eight is pretty Tio. There are a lot of time trial kilometers. Like, yeah, Giro Italy probably paid like two, three million to Pogacar. Maybe made uh, him a bonus. Let's say win a Giro and one more million. And for every, every stage you win, you get, I don't know, like 100k. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I mean that's very possible. It's, like we it's have sailor, seen, yeah, for Pogacar. Yeah, yeah, we have seen that before that the Giro is paying like riders to come there. I think or RCS yeah. for different races. Yeah, Chris think, Froome mm, in twenty eighteen. Yeah. yeah, probably also uh, Vanderpool in twenty twenty two in Budapest. Yeah. Maybe maybe Remco last year as well. I'm not sure, but that yeah, but it's possible yeah, as well. Like I heard possible. some rumors there. Like probably those riders want to come like are thinking about it but then they like demand an extra bonus to actually come there and it's kind of what the Giro has to uh, do in the last few years because the competition like the race they are going to the Giro are usually not great like it's yeah, probably like, like probably even Roglic last year I, I'm yeah, seeing yeah it might be it's possible too. like like just nobody wants to come to the Giro probably these days it, that's just how it is the, over the last few years because probably also because there's no top Italian GC rider like in the 2010s. There you like in the 2010s you like usually had Nibali like sure to come or like nearly every year. So there was already something, but now it's just 
in terms of studless quality, it's by far the weakest Grand Tour these days. Yeah, because you spend a lot of energy before the Tour of France and Giro Italia is like, like I don't know, like three times less bigger than Tour of France and it's not even yeah. on public like... broadcast so in a in lot, lot of countries. Like it's, it's yeah. dying, I think. Also, the RC, that their mother company also is in debt, I think. Like like I wouldn't be surprised if ASO at some time like just b bought the rights for Giro. Or just yeah, bought possible. out their CS from Rice Sport. I think they own it because they yeah. need to be logical. Uh, just ma make it like yeah, a, I mean, it's one it's... where uh, one big company owns all the races and controls the calendar, and yeah, so, so yeah. it's logical. And it's also like kind of the same thing which happened to the Welter, I believe, because they weren't owned yeah. by ASO until like ten years ago, something around that time. They were bought out by ASO, and then it suddenly became obviously much bigger race. The Volta has a super great start list every year now, with top GC riders, you know. So, it might be a blessing in disguise for the Giro as well. Yeah, okay, we we will not discuss the possible calendar because I have made it like <laughs> three times, I think, like. With, yeah, I also made some with, calendars. With, 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 let's say with with the stages being, I don't know, like. The Lantern Rouge variant, like okay, by, by Patrick Bro, where really, there are like uh, stages on weekend, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, four that's weekends a, in a row. Yeah, that's the stupidest <laughs> idea I've ever heard, man. I hate that idea. He always yeah. brings it up, like, yeah, that's know, the but... stupidest idea. Why would there be four rest days in a row? It just makes no sense. Uh, Only because, stages on uh, the weekends, bro. Like, yeah, because what the, is like. This? Possibly more like people watching on weekends, but again, like yeah, of course, on football like... in, in Champions League, they are playing yeah. in, uh, on Wednesday and Thursday, so and they still get the viewers, yeah, yeah, and there might be even like uh, less competition than on weekend we we weekends, yeah. yeah, because there's like F1 and blah blah, yeah, but, yeah, exactly. Uh... Like some Grand Tours are just just too too long, maybe, maybe maybe yeah. maybe I don't know, like. Less sprint stages, more climbing days. Like sprint stages, we, we can like cancel and they all go to <laughs> UE tour. Like fuck, fuck uh, sprint stages. Like might think a little like. Yeah, I, I do agree though that I think the Giro and Vuelta probably it would probably be better if there would be a bit shorter. Like let's say fifteen yeah. days for those two and keep the tour at twenty one. And really there's... fucking hard. Yeah. Yeah, because there are a lot of stages which don't get a lot of like rating of viewers in the Giro, which just breakaway stages where. In... The rest doesn't care. Or just uh, pure sprint stages, I guess. Yeah, also the like uh, the audience for uh, sprint stages, like even for the last stage in Tour de France is like horrible compared to mountain <laughs> stages. So yeah, people yeah, yeah, don't of care, care about sprints. Like also we don't care about sprints because... Uh... I, I like sprints actually. I don't mind sprints. Well, yeah, like... well, yeah, but we don't make articles, calculations, podcasts for sprints. Yeah. And, yeah, so yeah. I, I mean, there's not, not as much to discuss. Yeah, well, it's yeah. like it's just a sprint. Um, like there's yeah, one if there's like two two minutes of action, or let's say five minutes for a lead, I was like, you can't discuss that much. Yeah, like agree. Okay, thanks for listening, and we will be back sometime.